And I was a doorman at the comedy store in Hollywood. I was making a dollar a day. Like, it was fucking sad. And I used to get angry, like, fuck, this girl's not even that good. You know what I mean? I haven't seen her since. You know, because she's not as, I'm a roach. You have to be a cockroach. You know, I'm willing to suffer and, and sit in the pain. You know, I'm just like, you know, but so you have to be strong. I'm a pussy. Like, if you fought me, dude, I would, my, my, I have like brittle bones. You know what I mean? I have no muscle in my body. I'm just f pure fat. But, dude, in the inside, I'm a fucking roach. Well, you were talking about when you came in, you said it's like hard sometimes being an actor and waiting for a decision. It must be hard also waiting when you're first starting out, waiting for headlining gigs or, or other gigs. So it's like it's not it's not exactly a fun – that's not a fun part of their job. Even when I used to work in TV, every three months I'd be looking for a job just because that's how TV is. And my friends thought I was crazy out here. They're like, we have a job and I hope to work here for 20 years. And I'm like, uh, just not how it works out here. So it's like that, that not everyone could deal with like going to an audition and just never hearing back. One thing that I have in common with Bobby that why Bobby's feelings are hurt that I didn't ask him to come on the podcast. I was kidding, by the way. No, I'm I not know. I'm the wrong place. I know. Yeah. But uh, one of the things that I don't, I don't have much. I don't have much when it comes to comedy. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm a comedy store comic. That's big. We're the Marines. We're the ones that jump off parachutes and shit to bring you fucking real comedy. And we're, we're the last of the Mitzi Shore products. Yeah. We're the last. I, I don't have a lot to say. You don't see me on a TV show every week. You don't see me driving over a Maserati. But I will tell you what. I'm one of the last generation that she said. And I seen her throw some savages out of that. Yeah. And she fucking handpicked me from the fucking jump. You know, three minutes to seven minutes to ten minutes. Can you... Can you do 10 minutes for me next week? Okay, see you. And I didn't kiss her ass. I didn't sit next to her. I took that motherfucking ran like a savage. We're the last of that generation. These kids that are coming up now at the comedy store, it's the comedy store. It's not the Mitzi Shore generation. No, they're brutal. The comedy store has changed a lot. The exterior has changed a lot. The patois of it, which I love. I love the evolution of something. Because we started when in the 90s, right, when comedy was at the lowest point because the big television boom happened in the late 80s and the early 90s and in the light, late 90s it was dying it was like one of the lowest forms of uh, of show business you know so it's like the clubs you had way more comics than there should have been and little stage time which creates a really like an aggressive and hostile environment so it's like when you're at the comedy store you have no money and there's a thousand people signing up for open mic and you have to be able to like you know weave your way through that you know and we and Joe and I were a part of that generation of guys that like now it's like there's internet like you can be famous just by doing a video at in your bedroom you know but back then that was the route Mitzi know? sure didn't give a fuck she would throw you to the fucking line yeah she would and that's why I'm lying proof what would you do like cuz it made you laugh put you up for a year at 12.45, mm. following Domerera. Every or time. even something worse, somebody that's, like, not even good. <laughs> you know, like, they'll put you off, or I'm not going to name names, but, like, she was people that are, were, like, the worst comedy you've ever seen, and you'd have to go up after the, in front of five people at 1.30 in the morning in front of the worst comedy you've ever seen. Did and you, you'd do that for years. Did you hate her during it? Because I, like, I had a bad boss when I first moved out here who I hated during it, but now I see that she helped me. But bet you didn't hate her? I knew that there's a thousand comedians. One night there was a dude when I first got out there. I was I was out there maybe three months and it was twelve forty five. I was scratching for a bump of coke, but I couldn't do it till I got off stage. And there was a kid complaining. And somebody, I think it was Paul Mooney, said, You don't want your spot? Put a list out there and sign up for it. See how many people sign up for your two o'clock in the morning spot? You should be grateful. And I sat there and said, he's right. I didn't, I didn't just learn from Mitzi Shaw. I learned from Paul Mooney. Yeah. I learned from a lot of guys that I saw them go up there and what was going on with their lives. Dice was still coming up a, a lot. lot. Yeah, a lot. Well, how, how long did it take you, Bobby? Because I knew... Oh, that's I, right. We were bad boys of comedy. Yeah, yeah. Me, you, and Jim Norton. Yeah, Norton. yeah, me, Dice, Jim Norton. We went to Vegas. We yeah, went to yeah, Vegas so, yeah. with Dr. Oh, Happy. Cool. Yeah, that Mr. was a long time ago. That was Riviera? Uh, yeah. No, it was... Yeah. No. Bally's. 
Bally's. It was Bally's. They had a, a dish of fucking cold cuts in the room. Yeah. You and I thought it was like, <laughs> we had just made it. The comedy show was so brutal that, like, the audiences were two were gang members or, you know, like, just vampires, you know what I mean? And they they weren't regular human beings, right? Well, how many times did you go to get passed? I, I got passed the first time. She saw oh, really? Me. Yeah, I was lucky. I, when I asked if you hated her, like, already talked about doing it, like, 20 times or something crazy like that. He must have hated her at some point. Yeah, but Howie Mandel showcased 48 times. Wow. Yeah, so, um, but the thing is, is that when I did Leno for the first time in 2000, they asked me, "Are you scared?" I go, "I'm not. I play, I'm from the comedy store. This is <laughs> this is easy. These are regular people. I perform in front of Twilight vampires. They'll bite your dick after the show. You Would know, she come up to you and say shit like you'd walk in. You wouldn't know what was really going on. No. You'd walk in the room on a Sunday, and you go walk up the stairs to check in at the booth. And as you're making that turn, that's Mitzi motherfucking Shaw." And she's drinking her little drinks. She ain't going nowhere. She's got a menu in her hand. She's got glasses on. And you're up in 15 She minutes. also looks like a warlock. Yeah. And yeah you like think she's from like, Lord of the Rings. Like she has a cape, scarves around her uh, head. You don't know what it's like to bomb in front of Mitzi Shaw. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. You fucking go Do home. you remember a time? Fuck yes, I remember a time. Fuck yes. You also can hear her talk. So it's like when you're bombing, you can hear this. <laughs> Light them. And yeah. when, when they say, when she says that, your heart, your heart just, just, just disintegrates. She never lit me like that. She never lit me. I did see her throw out two or three comments. Give him the lie. <laughs> One night she went off. Bill Hicks, my ass. He's terrible. Give him the fucking <laughs> light. Give him the fucking light. She just went off. She never did that to me. She always let me come off. And then she go, I have an idea for you. I want you to grow your beard and put a handcuff on and tell him you're Fidel's nephew. I think we'd make a riot. We could sell that to TV. And you go, okay, Mitch. You know what she did to George Lopez, right? George Lopez auditioned for her, right? And minute in, she, she, she goes, line up. And George Lopez just snapped. Hey, bitch. You know what I mean? I've been on this, this, this. You know, like thing, saying his credits. He, she did that to Louis C.K. too. One minute in, this is after his HBO specials. Lying up, I'm, we would turn to Mitzi and go, "He's like the best comic in the country. What are you doing?" That's why when she she had to she had to go because she was losing her mind. Uh, I love her, but like when you're saying line it to Louis, Louis C.K., you're out of touch a little bit. She didn't like jo uh, Jerry Seinfeld either. Yeah, she didn't like Jerry Seinfeld. She didn't like a lot of people. Yeah, man. she, just didn't she doesn't like what like straight lace white dudes. No, you know what I mean, like regular old white dudes. She, you need to have like, an, you have to be an albino midget or nine foot Samoan. Like she likes, like you know what I mean, like a little catch. You know what I mean? Going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.